headlines. India reports 21,411 fresh COVID infections, 67 deaths in last 24 hours. COVID-19 naging akthok na ba? Miyam na sapo na toy na kut hambiu. To protect from COVID-19, wash your hands with soap frequently. Baks ning tina, niyom chum na upiu. Whenever you go out of your house, wear mask properly. Amadi, mi amaga, mi amaga di marakta, fit taduklap na hambiu. Always keep six feet distance from other people. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Kali, now the news in brief. With 21,411 new coronavirus infections being reported in a day, India's tally of COVID-19 cases rise to 4 crore, 38 lakh, 68,476, while the active cases increase to 1 lakh, 50,100, according to the Union Health Ministry data updated on Saturday. The death toll climbed to 5 lakh, 25,997, with 67 new fatalities, the data updated at 8 a.m. stated. The active cases comprise 0.33% of the total infections, while the national COVID-19 recovery rate was recorded at 98.46%, the ministry said. An increase of 618 cases has been recorded in the active COVID-19 caseload in a span of 24 hours. The daily positivity rate and weekly positivity rate was recorded at 4.46% according to the ministry. The number of people who have recuperated from the disease surged to 4 crore, 31,92,379, while the case fatality rate was recorded at 1.20%. According to the ministry, 201.68 crore doses of COVID vaccines have been administered in India so far under the nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive. Felic uh, felicitation program for the students of Heritage Convent Uripog, who secured different positions in the recently declared High School Living Certificate Examination 2022, conducted by Board of Secondary Education Manipur, was held at school today. Executive Director of Heritage Convent, S. Vikramjit, school principal, teaching and non-teaching staffs, parents and students attended the function. During the program, HSLC Examination 2022 second position holder Nomaitem Danajit and Tanis Tongbram were awarded with con commendation certificate and cash reward of 5 lakh each by Executive Director and Principal of the school. Ketramiyum Rajkiran, who secured 8th position, 11th position holder Matlida Laurembam, 17th position holder Joitika Rajkumari, 24th position holder Kwairapam Dayarani Devi, in the same exam were awarded cash reward of 2 lakh each with commendation certificate. Students from the school who were subject toppers were also given cash rewards and commendation certificate and encouraged. Moreover, the school teachers who played a big role in producing position holders were awarded with 15 lakh each. Executive Director of Heritage Convent S. Vikramjit said that since the past years, the school has been giving such award to the position holders as an encouragement to let the students become a responsible person in the society and future. He conveyed that such program will be organized and the teachers and parents will continue to strive to produce good students from the school. The first time we set up was in the year 2012 and then we managed one student to be there, the top 25. This uh, and ever, ever since we have been getting at least four or five students every year without any gap. So congratulations to our teachers, everyone, uh, and students, the parents, everyone, all of all of the teachers. It has been a combined effort of holidays, holidays, whatever it is, to lead on to achieve today's all because of the combined effort of uh, all of us. And I congratulate them and all our teachers, parents, well wishers, students, everyone. Congratulations. Farmers Connect Night Camp, organized by Regional Business Office Imphal 
of a state bank of India was held at Langmaidong Bazar Community Hall in Kakching District. MLA of Hianglam Assembly Constituency Dr. Y. Radishyam, Regional Manager of State Bank of India, Regional Business Office Imphal, Hepuni Bismarck, along with many officials, took part in the program. Speaking on the occasion, MLA Dr. Y. Radishyam stated that though the banks have been giving out loans and other benefits, many people are still unaware of those benefits. Awareness program should be organized to help the benefits pro benefits provided by the banks to reach the people he asserted moreover he added that those people who have availed loans from banks must have the habit of paying it back on time <laughs> ปูบเนี่ยมีเหตุการณ์เว้ยชิงกันตัวปูนี่ลอนเนี่ยอังกฤษตัวลอนให้เป็นวันนี้ไม่ตัวนี่ปูบนี่แบงก์ตะเกอ
one more dengue case was detected at Moray Town yesterday. The lone case was detected while testing seven suspected patients at Krishna Diagnostic. The individuals was from Mission Veng, Moray. Altogether, 41 cases have been detected for dengue in Moray. A team of Special Malaria Unit Moray will take up precautionary measures in areas where dengue cases have been detected. Let's look at some uh, national news now. The swearing-in ceremony of President-elect Draupadi Murmu will be held at the Central Hall of Parliament on Monday. She will take oath as the 15th President of India. Murmu is the first a tribal woman who will hold the country's top constitutional position. Drupadi Murmu, the NDA's presidential candidate, was elected president, defeating opposition nominee Yaswan Sinha. In view of the swearing-in ceremony, the Department of Personnel and Training has issued orders directing partial closure of certain central government offices. The construction work of the new parliament building also needs to be kept on hold during the time of the ceremony. As per the order, a total of 30 offices and buildings are required to be vacated by 6 a.m. on Monday for carrying out an anti-sabotage check. This exercise will continue till the ceremony is over. The buildings that would be vacated early include South Block, North Block Rail Bhavan, Krishi Bhavan, Shastri Bhavan, Sanchar Bhavan, PTI Building, AIR, Sena Bhavan, Yuva Bhavan, Udyog Bhavan and Nirman Bhavan among others. These buildings would remain closed from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. on 25th July. Ahead of the swearing-in ceremony of the New President Parliament will host a farewell to the outgoing President Ramnath Kovin in the Central Hall this evening. Tomorrow, President Kovin will deliver his farewell address to the nation. Enforcement Directorate has conducted raids on the residential premises of Arpita Mukherjee, a close associate of West Bengal Minister Pratha Chatterjee and C's, cash amounting to approximately 20 crore rupees in connection with an elite teacher recruitment scam in the state. In a statement, ED said the said amount is suspected to be proceeds of crime of the the said SSC scam. Apart from this, the probe agency also raided the premises of Minister of State for Education Paresh C. Adhikari and ex-president of West Bengal Board of Primary Education Manik Bhattacharya and others. The search teams took the help of bank officials for counting cash through machines. More than 20 mobile phones have been also been seized during the raids at the premises of Arpita. The others who were raided include R.K. Bhandoyapadya, OST to Partha Chatterjee when he was the state education minister earlier and his then personal secretary Sukanta Acharji. A number of incriminating documents, records, details of dubious companies, electronic devices, foreign currency and gold have been recovered from the premises of persons linked to the scam. The ED's money laundering case stems from an FIR by the CBI which was first directed by the Calcutta High Court to investigate the alleged scam in the recruitment of Group C and D staff assistant teachers of classes 11 and primary teachers. As an update on international news, Ukraine and Russia have signed a UN-backed deal to allow the export of millions of tons of grains from blocked Black Sea ports. The agreement potentially averted the threat of a catastrophic global food crisis. A signing ceremony at Dalmabache Palace in Istanbul was attended by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who had played a key role during months of tense of negotiations. The delegates of Russia and Ukraine were also present. Guterres said that the deal would open the way to significant volumes of food exports from Ukraine and elevate a parallel food and economic crisis in the developing world. 
Asian Development Bank ADB has cut its growth forecast for China to 4% in 2022 instead of 5% due to concerns over the country's zero-COVID approach and strict lockdowns. The measures have deepened the crisis in the already bad real estate sector reeling from the high level of debts and mortgage defaults. In its Asian Development Outlook, ADB said China's continued adherence to a zero-COVID strategy in response to renewed outbreaks early in 2022 has triggered the re-imposition of strict lockdowns. Amid a slowdown in China, ADB cut Asia's growth forecast to 4.6% as the prolonged war in Ukraine has pushed commodity prices higher and triggered monetary tightening by many central banks to control inflation. By 2023, ADB lowered its economic growth projection for developing Asia and the Pacific region to 5.2% from 5.3% while raising the inflation forecast to 3.5% from 3.1%. Now the headlines once again. India reports 21,411 fresh COVID infections, 67 deaths in last 24 hours. That's all I have for this hour. I'll come back to you at 4 p.m. with more updates. Goodbye for now.